configuring vSAN and vSphere 6. Okay. In this video, we will see how to configure vS vSAN and vSphere 6. And you know, vSAN or virtual SAN is a hyperconverged solution, hyperconverged storage solution where ESXi servers in a cluster utilize their local storage to form a virtualized SAN or storage area network. Nowadays, it's, it's getting popular day by day, uh, and many companies, they offer hyper-converged solution uh, for server workloads as well as for VDI. Uh, for a, a typical example, if I say like from EMC, it's EMC VSpec Blue, which is, you know, uh, EMC implementation or repackaging of VMware EvoRail and there are many uh, like that. So there are many, many, many products out there. vSAN minimum you need to have three hosts and maximum you can have up to 64 nodes. You can execute up to 200 VMs per host. Virtual disk size can go up to 62 terabytes. And now with the new version, which we call it 6.2, it has a rack awareness to tolerate failure. And minimum, you need one SSD for caching and one um, SAS drive uh, that will be a part of, you know, a SAN. Uh, you can have all SSDs also. Uh, that definitely will get better performance if you have all SSDs. However, uh, in that case, the requirement is the network connection needs to have 10 gig. If you have a hybrid where you have SSD and SAS, you know, uh, like in my lab environment where I will have one SSD drive for caching and SAS drive for forming a storage. In this case, you can get away with one gig connection that you will enable for vSAN traffic. And again, yes, it will be VM kernel network. And IOPS wise, yes, because of the SSD, you can get a very good IOPS and um, Snapshots and cloning are supported. There are some gotchas uh, when we come when we talk about vSAN and HA, and that's that. There are some, there are few things that doesn't go hand to hand together. But overall, it's a very good, very good uh, solution. If you have all flash version. Definitely, you will have a do different tiers of the cache tier and the capacity tier, and uh, uh, you will get excellent performance, really. And I have implemented, uh, I had the chance to implement uh, vSAN and one of the hyperconverged solution in production environment. And trust me, performance is second to none. Yeah, uh, I will honestly say this is the future, really. Imagine, uh, it saves you so much of complexity. No extra cabling required for SAN, no extra, you know, cards or zoning and all that. All you need hosts with an ability to add drives to your hosts and virtual SAN. And now it supports up to 64 nodes, uh, as per my understanding. Maybe my information is not very much updated, but as far as I know, I think it's six, still 64 nodes, which is quite big, you know. And one hard drive is a minimum. You can add more, and definitely it can utilize uh, with a bigger storage, make it a bigger storage. Of course, uh, how to do that? 
uh, let's let's see how to how to configure it in production environment or in, in, in a cluster. First thing first, you need to enable the SANET cluster level. So this is our cluster called cluster one, right? And if we go to manage settings, you can see here virtual SAN. And I go to general. Virtual SAN is turned off, so I go to edit. And I can say turn on virtual SAN. When I turn on virtual SAN or vSAN, there is an option add disks to storage, which will be of course virtualized storage or virtualized SAN. And by default, automatic is selected, which means you know all empty disk on the included host will be automatically claimed by virtual SAN. And if I say manual, then we need to manually select those disks. And the license, of course. So I will keep it automatic and let's see how does it go. And here is the gotcha I was talking about. See? It says turn off vSphere HA to turn on slash off virtual SAN. Okay. Got it. So we come to HA, which is on. And turn off. Now HA is turned off. Go back to general, edit, turn on, keep it automatic to make it simple. Uh, manual is all simple. All you have to do is just select this by yourself. But automatic means that you automatically analyze it. And as in my case, I have just one SSD and one normal SAS. So <laughs> I know what automatic is going to end up with. So I'm fine with automatic. And here it is. Now it's updating the send configuration on all three hosts, as you can see down here. And let's see. We'll wait for it to complete. So what I will do, I will pause this video and I will come back when it's done. Okay. Updated virtual send configuration completed. As you can see, three hosts, three of three eligible, and misconfiguration detected. What's that? Total capacity 59.39. Well, I had one hard drive of 60 gig and one of 50 gig. 50 gig was SSD that will be used for caching, and 60 gig was local hard drive. So, why total capacity is this much, and why misconfiguration detected? If you recall what I said to you in the beginning that you need to configure VM kernel network, right? So when I turn on HA, oh sorry, turn off F, oh, HA, turn off HA, and turn on vSAN, did I configure VM network? No, I didn't. So let's see what it's, I think this is what it's talking about. You see? With virtual SAN requires one VM kernel adapter with virtual SAN in it. So, what we should have done is configure. You see? Cannot communicate with other nodes. Virtual SAN network is not configured. So, what I will do, or what you'll do, I'll go home manage and I will go to. Distributed switch, correct, and uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. We have it here. 
in the networks. Remember all these networks? DM network, DB motion, and D the management network. So what I would like to do in this case. Okay. Uh, let's go back to this mode and we have distributed switch, correct? And we have data stores and networks. And these are the port groups, right? So if I go to VM kernel adapters and choose this one and go edit and enable for virtual SAN and do same thing for ESXi2 And same thing for ESXi3. Okay. I'm using existing network, but definitely you can create another VM kernel network. Actually, I just got a little confused because I'm running two lab in parallel and there is a slight difference in configuration so when I went to host level I was just quite surprised because I was expecting some dedicated network and uh, a different port groups so that's why I was just shuffling here and there then I realized oh that's a separate set of lab sorry about that so you can create different port group yeah or you can create or you can enable virtual SAN for for existing one. In my lab environment, I don't have VLANs, and uh, I use the same management network distributed, you know, uh, uh, board group for VM kernel, for VMotion, for application. So I enable the same one for. Uh, virtual SAN and you see the warning message disappeared so how about if I go back to cluster and virtual SAN and you see now the total capacity changed now 178 because now all three of them they can talk to each other okay I have 60 well, it's 60, it's around 180, right? But you know, we don't ever get the full capacity. Okay, I have 60. How much you got? Okay, I have 60. How much you? 60. Oh, 60, 60, 60. All right. So we have a same data store of 178.17 gigs. As far as the SSD is concerned, that would be used for caching. So let's see. Let me show you here. In Disk management, we go to disk management, you might be able to see it. Yeah, see this is the disk group he has created. And here, in this disk group you can see a flash of 50 gig and a hard drive of 60 gig. Same thing for ESXi2, 50, 60, ESXi3, 50, 60. All good. It's the default fault uh, fault to me, which you can you know prevent. Uh, you can put fault domain is a different concept in order to prevent the failure. Let's say a rack failure or or more. Because let's say your all host is the same rack, and what if if, if boom that rack fails 
because you lose everything, right? So that's basically another concept that you can group virtual sand hosts and create a fault domain. Maybe I have three different racks I can do to choose servers from different racks and configure a cluster out of them gather them in a fault to me and um, I think there was one more thing I wanted to show you just bear with me what was that just slipped in from my mind yeah okay let's go if I go if we go to storage low these are the hard drives as mentioned related objects data stores and this is the vSAN data store You see, it's been created and it's a virtual SAN. So it means if I move, you know, uh, or SV motion a virtual machine from my real SAN, which is the iSCSI 2 vSAN, it will work. So server one, let's see, server one is here, which is right now running on ESXi2, correct, and, and the VMD key for this VM is on data store cluster one, which is of course the uh, my eyes can see one and if you click on this one you see I can see data store and I can see data store too so if I select I can see data store one and see Server one folder is here. Okay. Because I replicated earlier. That's temporary to say. Okay. So, what is if I move storage to storage V motion? Okay, let's try that. How about it? What do you think? So, I have uh, server one, which is on data store. So if I right click and say migrate and I say change storage only ESXi3 is I think it's on ESXi3 ESXi2 it's fine and I choose vSAN what we say Virtual sand consumption would be 80 gig space and zero reserve flash space. Okay. And now it is relocating files from sand, iSCSI sand, to, to my virtual sand. So I will pause this video and I will come back when it's done. Okay, server one move to WeSan Data Store. And if we browse through this WeSan Data Store, we should see server one folder. And inside server one folder, there will be there will be what? Anybody. Server one VMG case, of course, isn't it? Awesome. Okay. Now let's get back to basics. What's the basic of V motion? The basic of V motion says in case by the way, in case you're wondering why this error is coming up, it has nothing to do with SV motion or 
uh, vSAN. This error is because of vSphere replication. So it's turned off. I just turned it off because to save some resources and it just keep plugging. And that's what you will also experience in case if you are doing the same. Anyway. Now, what's the basic of eMotion? eMotion says that you need a shared storage, right? So you can migrate workload or VM from one host to another host while it's running. Is it? 192.168.0.151. This is the IP of my VM. And how can I move or migrate this VM or vMotion it to one host to another host while it's continuing running? What's the basic requirement? Shared storage, isn't it? Right. So what is vSAN? vSAN is hyper-converged. Yeah, shared storage. So it means while my virtual machine files VMDK files on vSAN and right now this it's running on ESXi2 I should be able to vMotion it to ESXi3 right so let's see migrate computing resources only which is memory CPU and of course network so it's on ESXi2. So how about if you say ESXi1? Check succeeded. All good. Looking good. DVM network succeeded. Next. High priority. I want to remotion to ESXi1. Right now it's on ESXi2. Finish. And let's see. If vMotion succeeded, it means yes, virtual SAN is working. It is shared between all ESXi hosts, right? All three ESXi hosts are gathering together and they have developed a virtualized SAN where I can migrate my VMs. Correct? And what I did, oh! Excellent! Awesome! And look at this! ESXi1! Cool! Not even a single thing missed. Not even a single thing. Awesome! Wow! And it's a lab environment. It's a lab environment and not even a single thing. Whoa! Blown away! Awesome! So guys, the virtual SAN is working. Is it? So remember when we were enabling virtual SAN, it says turn off actually, please. So can I turn it on after enabling vSAN? Or is still, it won't allow me. Well, let's see. So if you go to cluster and HA and edit and Turn on HA. Okay. If see, it's still I is preserving my settings because we temporarily disabled HA. So now when we turn off temporary HA, and now I'm turning it on again. So do you think if I press OK, will it let me go through with it? Let's see. Yeah, it worked. Awesome. So, whenever you want to configure vSAN, and in case if you have already configured HA, all you have to do is just turn off the HA, configure vSAN, and turn it back on. So, there is some warning here. And what did it say?
what did it say about warnings? Come on. Let's see. Okay. Um, so we have tested HA. Oh, sorry. HA was another video. We have tested uh, vSend and it's working absolutely fine. Warning disappeared because, you know, when we turn off HA, we turn off HA and we turn on what happens. It reconfigures HA, right? it configures the HA agent so that was the warning that was warning was all about okay so cool all cool everything is good server one it's running on ESXi one and that vSphere bugger replication bugger is still Okay. What do you think? What is Virtual Sand? It's a virtualized sand created by members which are participating in a cluster, right? Using their local storage. And each server, ESXi1, ESXi2, ESXi3, have local SD for caching and local hard drive <coughs> to participate in that. Uh, to participate on that virtualized same isn't so how about let's try let's be bold this time and try to turn off power off ESXi1 what do you think shall we test it don't forget it will test two things number one of course, we will lose computing power and memory, and we also lose a part of disk space because each host is participating in it with the space of its own, right? Using its own local hard drive. So if I turn off ESXi1, I will lo lose this, that part of this way it means I will lose one SSD and I will lose one hard drive out of the total total vSAN configuration. So let's do this. What the heck? Okay, so this is ESXi and I will do I will power it off. And boom. It's gone. Go back to the center. Ooh, ooh. VM is down. And why? Because it was running on ESXi1. What do you think? Now what will happen? You think HA will kick in? And VM will be restarted. Let's see. You can see ESXi1. It's on red here. And there are some warning messages. And what those warning messages say is Yeah, host can't communicate with all other nodes in the vSphere SAN. Right? And if I go to server 1,
and refresh. It's a server farm is running. Okay, cool. Let's open the console. Aha. Uh -huh. You see that? H A kicked in. Yeah, it's still restarting. Now it's up. So H A kicked in. We lost the capacity. Yes. So, but VSAN is doing what it should do. Means. By using vSAN, we can do vMotion. That's fine. vMotion is fine. And high availability is also fine. So, whatever I can do with traditional cluster, like under shared storage to configure HA or high availability, I can utilize the same feature with vSAN. So, isn't it great, gentlemen? Isn't it? Okay, now if I go to this side and let's go here, cluster and related objects and data store. Of course, that's a local data store, this is accessible. It still is it's showing 118 and what was it before if you recall 60 60 60 what did I say before remember 60 gig hard drive each one has 60 gig so it was on the 78 point something you remember now the capacity is reduced but it can tolerate a failure of a host. Awesome, isn't it? So guys, this is what I'm saying. It, it is very nice, very cool feature. Who says it cannot be scalable? It can be scalable. And trust me, big companies are shipping, you know, like crazy. This hyper-converged solution. They are not stupid. Trust me, they are. Uh, um, I would say it might too early to say, but I would say most of the organization are still. They are moving though. They are moving toward hyperconverged. Uh, but no deny that the future really belongs to hyperconverged storage. Or San has to be very dirt cheap. <laughs> so this is it guys we have tested let me just turn on one more thing I can just show you quick if you don't mind we send general yeah two of two eligible yeah because third one is down uh, <coughs> this management sorry It will show me here, ESXi1, yeah, or responding, but these two are connected. So that's what I'm talking about, guys. It, it is, it's a wonderful technology, and it's not new anymore. It's not like that it's not matured. It's been a while. People are using it. It's been there, and 
getting better and better. So I would strongly advise you to, if you get a chance, get hands on to read more about it. Read more about it. Dig deep. By the way, VMware is not the only one who provide hyperconverged solution. If you remember, Nutanix is another example. You know, Nutanix, a company called Nutanix, they have, they have their own way of doing things. And, uh, in summary, I would say, just, just, just explore it. Don't just you know reject it or don't. Be too judgmental about it. We keep it open mind and try to analyze it, try to read. See, is it a good fit to your company or not? Maybe it's not, or maybe it is. Maybe it can fulfill or tick all the boxes, or maybe not. So, bottom line, nothing, no, nothing is perfect. And Everything has its own plus and minus. So ultimately, it's your decision to choose the best possible technology out there that can tick most of the boxes. So this is VSAN in a nutshell for you. And once again, thank you very much and, um, for watching this video. Please do subscribe to my channel if possible. That will motivate me to prepare and make more and more videos for you. And thank you very much. Take it easy.